Good morning and happy Mother's Day. Today we not only celebrate our biological mothers, but anyone in our lives who acted in a maternal capacity. So it is fitting that we sing together our hymn number 451, Open My Eyes That I May See. We'll sing all three verses. I lit the candles. Happy Mother's Day. This Mother's Day, I'm grateful for my mom, Nancy Stoltz, who blessed me with the gift of a loving family and her beautiful voice. Thanks, Mom. We like to wish our mother, Becky, a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you for teaching me new things. Thank you for being there for me. And we'd also like to wish a very happy Mother's Day to our great Aunt Sherry. Thank you for supporting our family. I'd like to wish a happy Mother's Day to my mom, Kitty. She's been a great inspiration for my brother and I, and she's been my rock throughout my whole life. Thank you, Mom, for all you've done, and happy Mother's Day. Hello, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I wanted to uh, say thank you very much for all the courage, drive, determination you gave me and all the love and support over the years. We miss you at this time and hope to see you soon. Love you. This is my beautiful mother, Patricia Noga. I'm grateful to Mama for loving me no matter what and for teaching me to be thankful for the small blessings of life. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. This Mother's Day, I'm grateful for my mother, Barbara Overton, who taught me to be a strong woman. This Mother's Day, I am grateful for my fabulous mother-in-law, who was the mother of my wife, and for my wonderful daughter-in-law, who is mother to my grandchildren. This Mother's Day, I'm grateful for my mother, Marty 
Ebright Grabner, who taught me to appreciate the beauty in the world, who taught me to understand unconditional love, and who taught me how to speak my mind and to stand up for what I believe. Thank you, Mom. This Mother's Day, I am grateful for my mother, Janet Peterson, who taught me how to be strong, to be strong for myself and for my community. I'm convinced that if my mom did not encourage me to come out from hiding in the bathroom before my races at swim meets because I was tired and afraid, I would have never developed the strength, confidence, and diligence to push myself to go to Turkey, SEA, Alaska, or the Dry Tortugas, adventures that have each distinctively further shaped my character. My mom has shown me the importance of being a pillar in our community through her dedication to our family and to Riviera, to her career, and to her friends at the J. Most people joke around how they come into adulthood and realize how much their parents are just people too. I can't say I can quite relate. My mom is so poised, intelligent, and grounded. She still knows everything about everything. She is my rock. I'm so lucky, lucky to have the support system I have. She even let me move home a couple times while trying to figure myself out. I'm also lucky to have a great adult relationship with my mom. I love you very much, mom, and a happy Mother's Day to you today and every day. My parents met in Chicago, but I would like to thank my mother, Marlene Adams, for having the good sense to move to Florida before I was born. Thanks, mom. I'm fortunate to have had two strong and independent in women influence and impact my life. My mother, Julia Gallus, who guided and loved me through childhood, adolescence to a young adult, and my mother-in-law, Agnes Mazzola, whom I respected and emulated throughout my marriage. To these two women, I am eternally grateful. Roses are red, violets are blue. Mama the sweet as candy, baby Ruth are just dandy, but I like my mama Ruth. Roses are red, violets are blue. Mom are the sweet as candy. That's why she's called Mama Ruth. And roses are red, violets are blue. Mom are the sweet as candy. That's why she's called Mama Ruth. Moms share an amazing amount of great stuff with their kids, and sometimes without even knowing. And for me, those momisms would often pop up in the most unexpected places, like when mom couldn't remember our names and she would call out, Ruthie, Johnny, Valerie, Susie, oh, whoever you are. Well, my students didn't like it a bit when I'd say, Marsha, Diva, Lavinia, well, whoever you are. But they always found it funny when I would tease, ooh -wee! another momism. You better not go out that door before the bell. And they were sure I had gone nuts when I would burst out singing one of Mama Ruth's tunes, like a horse and a flea and three blind mice sitting on the curbstone shooting dice. The horse he slipped, fell on the flea. Oops, said the flea, there's a horse on me. Mama Ruth, you never knew I used you for class control. Thanks, Mama Ruth. Happy and Mother's happy. Day, Mom. These are for you. You fill my life forever with love, happiness, humor, music, the ability to care and give to others. Thank you for giving your heart to me, to creating such a beautiful, wonderful family, and helping me be a better person and helping me to be better parent. I wanna tell you how much Julian, Elliot, Victoria love you and the puppies. Duke and Lady, and I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mama Ruth. Welcome. I'm Missy Shivrick, and I'm the pastor of Riviera Presbyterian Church in Miami, Florida. We are um, celebrating Mother's Day today, and we're happy that you are with us. Riviera is a um, progressive church that is open to all people, we embrace the fact that God loves all unconditionally. And um, so if you're visiting us today and not a member of Riviera, we're happy you're with us and we look forward to maybe meeting you in person someday. If you would scroll down the um, 
the worship bulletin, you will find that there is a place that you can sign in and let us know who you are and if you have any prayer requests. See what love has been given to us, that we should be called children of God. By this we know love, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and lived and died, that God's love might be made plain among us. Therefore, beloved, let us not love in word or in speech, but in deed and in truth. And the love we share and the love we freely give to another, we experience God. So let us praise God and live in love and friendship toward the human family and all our actions. Let us worship God. Join me in the call to confession. Too often our hearts are cold and without gratitude. Too often our hands are passive and unwilling to carry out acts of mercy. Too often our lips are passive and unwilling to speak words of love. Too often we are indeed alienated and separated from our better self separated and alienated from God. Let us confess our separation and alienation. Let us join together in the prayer of confession. Dear God, we realize that we have not made ourselves and our homes the dwelling place of your love that we would like. We long to be to others a beacon of serenity of spirit and peace at this time of uncertainty and fear. We long for the day when each family everywhere might live in peace, free of the fear of the coronavirus and economic concerns. Yet we confess that even within ourselves there is much anxiety, fear, and distrust. Look upon us with kindness and mercy. Rule in our hearts and our world so that we might walk in your path, model your love, and share our hearts with others. Amen. Assurance of Pardon Our confession is an acknowledgement of our humanness, our need for God's grace. God has promised that we can be forgiven for our weaknesses, our insensitivities, and our cynicism. We accept this assurance with humility and great gratitude and a commitment to be more loving in our daily life. Here I am in the woods again today, and there were a couple things that I wanted to show you. So this time of year in Cleveland, there's new things that are growing every week. And so we come out here and you can see that it's greening up. And there's also some wonderful things that are just springing up out of the ground. These are ferns. And if you look, the fern as it grows is called a fiddlehead. And if you look at it closely, it looks like a violin or a fiddlehead. And then over here is one of my favorite, favorite um, things that you find in the woods. And um, I'm going to turn it around so you can look at it closely. It's called a jack in the pulpit. And John German insists I let everyone know that these are very poisonous. But you can see that there's a little man inside the pulpit that's jack in the pulpit. And the reason I came down this path today is that this is a, a deer path going down to the water. And um, and this area of the woods, there aren't a lot of people, so this deer, this is a frequent um, path that deer make. And one time, Bosco, my dog, was here with me, and usually we don't see animals because Bosco and I make a lot of noise, so they are gone long before we get to places. But this day, Bosco had a, met a little fawn, a little deer baby, and um, he, because he's a shepherd, he'd got the fawn to go with him. And, um, and they, he was so excited. He had this little friend, but off in the distance, you could hear the mother deer crying, crying for her baby. And it made me realize that this love that we're going to be talking about today in worship, this, this love that, that mothers show us, this unconditional love, which is our glimpse of God, we also can see in the animal world as well. Let us pray. God, we thank you that there's so many ways that we experience your love and learn of it. We see it in nature and we see it in our homes. We see it with our friends. 
and we are so grateful. Amen. God of mercy, you promise never to break your covenant with us. Amid the changes of our world in these past two months, speak your eternal word that does not change. Then may we respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives. Through Jesus Christ, amen. In his Wednesday morning blog, Catholic priest and theologian Richard Rohr made the conclusion that because Jesus' fundamental vision was that all people are children of God, whenever he met a person, he would have therefore believed that God was somehow present in them. And any of us that have taken a yoga class would be familiar with that fundamental theological statement. After all, at the end of each class, as you and your yoga instructors say, Namaste, which is the Hindu statement that the divine in me salutes the divine in you. Even though the statement is Hindi, it sets well with us because we know that God is in everything. And if we look and open ourselves to experience it, God be, can be experienced in all of creation. And this morning's scripture passage takes this knowledge of God's presence even further as it discusses that one of the gifts of loving another is that you get to experience and taste God's love within it. Listen now to verses 7 through 12 of the fourth chapter of John's first letter, which is found way back in the back of the New Testament. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning is Mother's Day and it is the single largest holiday for flower sales in our country, even outselling Valentine's Day. And after Easter and Christmas Eve, it's the largest attended worship day of the year. Yes, perhaps it's another holiday promoted by the card and the flower industry, but there's something emotionally gripping about it. Mothers and the people who are the maternal figures in our lives 
are extremely important to us. We feel and we know without a doubt the special bond, that special love that parents share with their children, that it's something for which we should be grateful and to which we should give thanks. And as you listened to the statements made by our church mothers, by, by our church members giving tributes to mothers or mother-like figures in their lives, that became really apparent. Unconditional love, security, the gift of life are all things for which we gave tribute and praise. I was personally blessed to have a grandmother and a mother in my life who were central figures as I grew up and are still with me even though they're deceased as I carry them in my heart. And the writer of John catches this. John knows that love is important. It comes from God and it's a gift from God. The knowledge that we are loved might be the single most important fact to help us navigate life. I always have said that our ministry to children of our church and the greatest gift we can give them is that when they go out into the world, they do so with a strong faith and the strong conviction that they are loved unconditionally by God. And this love which we share with one another and with the world in which we live, with our family, our friends, and even our pets. Well, they offer us another gift. Through the many loves we share with others, we also experience and we know God. God's love is greater than our understanding. We know it in part, but we can't comprehend it in total. But we do catch glimpses of it in the gifts of love given to us. When someone loves us so much that they can forgive us for our imperfections, we catch a glimpse of God's unconditional love. When someone loves us so much that they're unselfish in their giving, we understand the sacrificial aspect of God's great love. Many of the qualities of the love for which we thank our parents are in part small glimpses of what God is. And we are promised to see God in the love we share with others. This is a charge to us as to how we should live as believers of a loving God. We are to love others, imitating God's love in order that we experience God. Each week during this pandemic, the ministers of our presbytery have a Zoom conference on Tuesday mornings with each other and with our presbytery staff. It's actually helped me put the sadness and the overwhelming loss of the coronavirus that has spread around the world into a theological framework. I kept asking myself, where's God and where's God's good news in all this? And I have found, dear friends, it's right here within us. It's in our love. It is within our community we call Riviera and the care we have for each other. It's in the food pantry that we operate. It's in every thank you we say to each person that's working on the front line during this time that we must quarantine ourselves. It's in every household where someone is called to see how they're doing. It's in every breath and every long exhale taken to let out the anxiety that's held up inside. God is here. God is in the love we give and in the love we receive. God is in our hopes for the future and God is in the hand that calms us when we have trouble finding that hope. God's love does not abandon nor does it give up. To quote French novelist Victor Hugo, to love another person is to see the face of God. Amen. Dear God, we are thankful for the many ways we experience you in the love we share, love that is freely given to us and love that at times we feel we don't even deserve. This morning, we especially raise up to you in thanksgiving 
the unconditional love we have experienced in our lives and the way that it allows us to see in part how great your love for all creation is. We thank you this morning for the many people in our lives who have showered us with love and we raise up with thanksgiving and praise mothers and mother-like figures in our lives. God, we pray that we become more loving. We pray that we learn to see what is God-like in all people and experience the divine in them. Teach us to move past grudges, prejudices, and petty arguments and to appreciate what is different, to respect what we might not understand in others and to realize that it is a holy opportunity to love each person. God, teach us to share love with all people and to be Christ's heart and hands in the ways we reach out, we share, we care, and we minister to your whole creation. God, we pray for others. Be with all who are having trouble feeling your warm embrace at this time. We ask that we be your people, sharing your light and love with all. Be with those to whom Mother's Day is a sad day. Embrace those who are deep in grief and loss. We pray for our world wrestling with how to live with a virus gripping our planet. Show us how to minister to others who are lonely, who are frightened, who feel insecure. Show us how best to share your love and tender care. We pray all this in Christ's name who taught us to pray in this manner. Our creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We're grateful you've worshiped with us today. And um, if you are a member of another Presbyterian church or any church, this morning as we take our offering, we ask that you give to your home church. If you do not have a home church, please consider giving to Riviera Presbyterian Church. We have many ministries at the church that are going on. We are an earth care congregation, which is very committed to, um, to preserving God's good creation we think being in Miami, we're probably at ground zero in a lot of ways of what's going on. We also have a food pantry that's very active right now, helping the food insecure. The call to offering. We bring these offerings because of the love you have poured out on us. Because of the many ways you have blessed us, we have much to give. These tithes and offerings express our gratitude and our aspiration to be more fully your disciple. And we ask that you grant your joy to all who give and to all who serve. Amen. There are so many ways that we experience love in the world. We experience in the relationship we have with our parents early on. We experience in the relationship we have with our siblings, with our friends, with our children, with our partners. And in each one of those relationships, we are so blessed that we get a little glimpse of the greatness of God's love. And that will carry us through whatever happens to us throughout life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make thy face to shine upon you and give you peace.
both now and in life everlasting. Amen. We hope you enjoyed worshiping with us this morning. As our closing song, we invite everyone to sing the gift of love. Number 693, Though I May Speak, The Gift of Love.